Hi and welcome back to Aris TV. We are here live from Split in the wonderful country of Croatia for our Aris Process Day and today we will show you what people are saying there. It is a story about a very simple point. Business processes are not important for your business. Business processes <laughs> is your business. Hi everybody, this is Eric Brabender from Aris TV and today we are live from Split from Aris Process Day and I have the pleasure to meet with Rob Davis and I got him for a few minutes for a short interview. Perhaps you know Rob Davis from writing this first book, the book Aris Design Platform Getting Started with BPM and just today Rob is writing on a second part of the book while the first part is addressing the beginner's level, the second part will address the advanced user level. And now I would start with my questions. And Rob today mentioned during his presentations the seven pillars of BPM at British Telecom, which were culture and strategy, architecture and business model. He told about ownership and governance, tools and methods, performance management, the implementation challenge, and systems and processes. This sounds interesting, and for me it was one basic question. Rob, what is about business or about architecture and business model? Can you give us some examples for that? Yes, Eric, I will. Architecture is about understanding the different things that are important to your business and how they relate to one another. For instance, process, IT systems, resources such as people and material resources, vehicles, etc. And architecture is about understanding all those different things and how they relate together. And it's important because when you start modeling your business, you need to understand the structure of how those things will fit together. For a lot of people, they start modeling straight away. And then later on, you find you've got lots of disparate models that don't fit together. Different people model in different ways. So the point about architecture is to understand the structure of how your models are going to fit together. For most people, you want to model in a hierarchical way. So at the top of the hierarchy you have high level models which give the concepts of your business and then you can go down to more detailed levels which talk about detailed process flows, workflows and procedural information. So part of architecture is defining a hierarchy of structure and working out at each level of structure what sort of models you want, what sort of items are going to be in there and how much detail you're going to model. So it's important to put that structure in place before you start people actually doing modelling work. And then you can say to somebody, please go away and model this piece of the architecture at this particular level of detail. And then you can be confident that they will understand what you mean and put the right information in place. So although architecture sounds very technical and very intellectual, it's really important to understand that structure before you start. Okay, thanks yeah, so far. Does that make sense? 
one thing that was really interesting that I learned today that you in implemented at BT a six level hierarchy and architecture and you explained that it should be easy and that the people should uh, understand on which level of the architecture they are. Can you give us a short impression of that? Yes, when we first started modeling we found different people would model different levels of detail. So that meant we can't, couldn't join the models together because some persons would have modeled very, very detailed information, other people would have stayed at a very high level abstract level. So we created our six level hierarchy where the top three or four levels showed the structure of the business, the key processes, the major departments. And then when we got down to levels three and four, we got actually into real process models that got into detail. And by the time we were down at the lowest levels, level five or six, we had real implementation detail that people could actually work with or they could design a system to meet. So this has been very successful in BT and we've actually got most people now to be able to talk in terms of the levels of the hierarchy. So we can give somebody a project to say, go and design the level four processes for this particular project and they will know what we mean and we'll get the right sort of answer back. Sounds very interesting so far. So thank you for this information. Another uh, one or another pillar that I read was the kind of ownership and governance. Perhaps can you give us here a little bit more details what you mean with that? Yes, of course. Because process is not just something your business does. Process is your business. It's the very heart, the very core of what you do. We really want to manage process as part of our everyday management activity. So we don't really want to manage the business in a different way to the way we want to manage process. So process governance and process ownership is key to how you manage your business. So for instance, imagine that you've got a, a process that takes a sales order from a customer, supplies the particular order, in our case it might be a telecom service, and then delivers that to the customer. That end-to-end -end process runs across many different departments in your business. Now currently, in most organisations, each department will have a different manager and they will work in a conventional business hierarchy. The important thing about process governance then is for somebody to own the process as it runs across all the departments in the business. And this is very important to do and it's important to give that process ownership to a senior person who has the right level of authority to be able to make decisions, make changes to the process and make them happen. So it's important that person takes their responsibility seriously, they set the targets for the process, the measures, and they're responsible for delivering that. It can be quite difficult to implement process ownership because it's very different to the normal management way a company works. So it's a real challenge in BPM to install process ownership and get it to work properly. Thank you, Rob. This was very interesting. And I think um, perhaps we have the time or the possibility to make more of those interviews with you. I'm really interested to do so, and we will be back with the next session on RSTV soon. Thank you.